Hello, this is Professor Stephen Nashaba, and I'm here to help you out with uh, the uh, computational guided inquiry on introduction to molecular orbitals. So uh, there's a number of objectives and self-tests you want to have a look at, some theory here, but I'm going to take you straight to the pre-lab uh, uh, for this activity. And uh, what the pre-lab uh, I've asked you to do is to set up your computational notebook with the table of contents and all that, and uh, in the entry for your uh, for this for this comp lab, look up the HH bond strength in kilojoules per mole. Now your text has this in Table 8.2, so uh, that'll be uh, straightforward. Now for the boron nitrogen bond in mono and molecules like amino borane, you'll uh, it'll take a bit of sleuthing. Uh, but uh, if you go to this website here. Uh, they have boron compounds with nitrogen donors, and although um, this website doesn't list the bond strength between NH3BF3, which is what we're looking at, they, there is NH3BH3, which will be comparable. You just got to remember that this is in kcals per mole, and to put that into kjoules per mole, you need to multiply by an appropriate factor. That's uh, 4.184. So uh, let's go back to uh, the in-class activities. There are uh, four, and the first two have to do with, with calculating the bond energy uh, using Spartan. And the first uh, molecule we're going to be looking at is H2. So I'll just take you to Spartan now. And um, this is a pretty uh, straightforward calculation. Uh, I've, uh, I've set it up here in the inorganic tab. Uh, the first thing you'll need to do is, is calculate the, uh, the energy levels and the energy of of uh, just a straightforward hydrogen atom. So I've got this, now it wants to put a sep separate hydrogen atom on that, so I'm going to take that away. And in uh, uh, calculations, uh, what we want to do is a, uh, is, a, is a B3 lip calculation. Now uh, one thing that's a bit tricky about this is that hydrogen has one unpaired electron. Apart from that, it's pretty well straightforward. And uh, you want to save it uh, however, however you like, so I'm going to save it there. And uh, now that calculation has started, and let's hope it's it's going to be over in a few minutes. Yep. Okay. So uh, now, what do we do? Well, um, we we uh, need to look at the uh, uh, energy of the molecule, or in this case, the atom itself. And uh, in order to do that, what we do is going to be to display this spreadsheet. And uh, down here, we'll go to Add, and you'll see one of the options is the energy and it's going to tell us in kilojoules per mole, so that's okay. And uh, that is the energy of, of the hydrogen atom in kilojoules per mole. So then uh, you'll want to do the same thing uh, with the hydrogen molecule. And to do that, I'm just going back to the same menu. I'm going to click on there, and I'm going to keep that extra hydrogen on. So we'll go to Setup Calculations. Once again, do a B3 lip calculation. Now there's no unpaired electron, so I can just go for that. And I'm going to call that H2, and uh, hopefully that will get done in uh, before too long. And here we go. Um, there it's completed. And uh, let's see, I will just do the properties uh, spreadsheet on this one as well. Um, add, once again, the energy kilojoules per mole. And there's the energy of the hydrogen molecule, H2. Okay, so that will take you through the, uh, the analysis of H2, and um, well, you'll do the same thing for the molecule uh, NH3BF3. Uh, um, but what I want to do is I want to take you to the next step here, which has to do with molecular orbitals, and we'll be doing that for both of those, those uh, systems, but I'll just take you through how to do that on, uh, on these molecules. So on H, uh, the way we look at the uh, orbitals on this is we go to this orbital energies diagram right here. And you'll notice that uh, these two columns show up. We're going to ignore the B column here. We're just going to look at the A one. And what you'll do is you'll, you'll click on this one. And uh, hopefully uh, it will show up. And there we go. Now, um, that is an orbital. Uh, you'll probably recognize that as a, um, as a, a, a 1s orbital. And uh, there's uh, another orbital, and that's a 2s orbital. So you can look at both of those. Now, what's going to be important, actually, is the energy of this orbital, which has a single electron in it, and that's given right down here. It's minus 8.6 electron volts. 
Um, another thing that you'll want to be doing is looking at the uh, orbital diagram or the orbital energies of um, H2. So I've done that up here again. Once again, you'll go to um, this display. I like to put it in the mesh view. And so there we go. Now there's a molecular orbital. It still um, has to obey the um, Pauli exclusion principle. So two electrons maximum will go into this. It's called the HOMO because H2 only has two electrons. HOMO stands for highest occupied molecular orbitals. It's a bonding orbital. You can see electron buildup between the two uh, nuclei. Uh, now, if you wanted to go up and, and look at the uh, next highest orbital, that's an antibonding molecular orbital. And uh, there aren't any electrons in that one for, uh, for ordinary H2. Now, uh, one other thing, as before, you can see that the energy of this bonding molecular orbital is minus 11.8, and the energy of the antibonding one is 2.7 EVs. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much the game plan. Uh, you'll be doing this, and then you'll be doing the same thing for the other uh, system we've been looking at, which is NH3BF3.